One or two words of reflection on this gospel. It comes from chapter 6 in Luke's gospel, and we will have the continuation of this tomorrow, and we'll call it the Sermon from the Plain. It's the equivalent of Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, and this is Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount, and it's called the Sermon on the Plain. He comes down from the mountain, he preaches the Sermon on the Plain. But today, the beginning of this is the call of the Twelve, and they're named here. Uh, They appear in all four Gospels. John doesn't give a lot of attention to the Twelve, but all the Gospels mention the Twelve who were called Apostles. Twelve is a very important number because it's meant to be the new Israel. We had the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 patriarchs, and now we have a new Israel. The 12 are called. By the way, parenthetically, the fact that he called 12 men is not a good argument against women. This was a patriarchal society. This was meant to be a representation of the 12 patriarchs, 12 tribes of Israel. That's another discussion at another time. But let me talk about the notion of vocation. He calls these 12 to follow him. Consider in your own life what your vocation truly is. My vocation is not to be a priest, or your vocation is not to be married, or to be single, or whatever. Be a teacher. Your vocation is to follow Jesus Christ. You will live that out in priesthood, in religious life, or in marriage, or in single life, or whatever your vocation is, a teacher, a physician, whatever. But your vocation is not what you do. Your vocation is a relationship with Jesus Christ. He calls them to follow him. Well, what does it mean to follow Jesus Christ? It means in the manner in which you live it out, priesthood, marriage life, single life, whatever it is, you will experience what Jesus Christ experienced. You will experience misunderstanding. You will experience rejection. You will experience carrying a cross. You will experience loneliness or darkness, misunderstanding in your life. That's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. And so we will take the call of Jesus Christ to become his disciples and to live that out in the manner in which life unfolds for us. So we have to displace the primacy of priesthood or marriage or single life, whatever it is, or vocation of a teacher, physician, whatever you are. It's not your vocation. Your vocation is to follow Jesus Christ. The manner in which you will do this is through your chosen way of life, marriage, priesthood, whatever it is. If you lose touch with the primacy of Jesus Christ calling you, then you will reduce your vocation to living out some call, which is something in the world, whether it's priesthood or whatever it is. Following Jesus Christ is the call. That's the vocation. Vocation comes from a Latin word, vocare. Vocare, Latin means to call. Jesus called me to follow Jesus Christ. Now, the manner in which I live that out will be in my priestly life. That's very important to keep in mind. We lose touch with Jesus Christ trying to live a priesthood, a married life, or a single life in the presence of God will not be possible. It's the power of Jesus Christ. It's following the Lord. You discover this in prayer following Jesus Christ when you come to Mass and you receive the Eucharist. Augustine would remind us, it's not a matter of receiving the Eucharist. It's to become the Eucharist which you receive. 
Become the bread which is broken. Become the wine which is poured out. You must become the Eucharist. So when you go forth from here, you become the bread which is broken to bless people, to feed people, to forgive people. The human endeavor to live out the Eucharist which we become. You know, some people receive the Eucharist. I mean, I've had it, had it here on Sunday where people receive communion and they go out and say, the homily was too long. And I said, oh, but did you receive Jesus Christ? I did, but the, the music wasn't okay. And I said, well, did we lose touch with the miracle of becoming the Eucharist? That's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. So keep this in mind. It will come up tomorrow when you listen to tomorrow's gospel and you'll hear the Sermon on the Mount. That's the manner in which Jesus calls his followers to live out being disciples or apostles. Now let me say a little word to these children. It's always wonderful to have you here. Who's uh, TK? Who's TK? Hands up, who's TK? Okay. And who's kindergarten? Okay. How about the first grade? Hands up, first grade. Wow. Okay. Second grade? Fantastic. Second grade is a big year for you. So, okay. Now, what does this gospel mean to you? Let me tell you. Today, to follow Jesus Christ you're going to do two things. One is you're going to stop and thank God for all the blessings you have in your life. Do you have many blessings in your life? Tell me about some of the blessings you have in your life. People love you, yes? They, uh, they give you food. Pardon me? Food? Yes. Whatever blessings do you have in your life? Do you have any other blessings you know about? Okay, blessings of your parents, blessings of your teachers. Who has friends here? Well, your friends are a blessing. Do you have a chance to make a new friend today? That's a blessing you will share, okay? So now, I want you to be grateful today, and I want you to think about what Jesus is asking you to do today. So when you're trying to make a decision today, you'll say, now, what would Jesus want me to do today? Okay, does that sound okay? Hands up who's going to walk with Jesus today. Hand up. Wonderful. Wow, teachers, this is going to be a wonderful day at the school. Wow. Let's give an applause to these classes here. They're going to live out the gospel today. Wonderful. That is wonderful. Yeah. Now, we lucky to have you here. We are so blessed to have you here now. Who's going to bring up the gift?